Hey guys, how's it going? Set up here. Trying to figure out what this is connected to. In. All right. What's going on today? What's going on today? Beta three. Okay, looks like uh, YouTube's going. Hey, hello over YouTube. Can you guys on uh, Facebook maybe say something? Make sure all this chat's working. <laughs> all right. Um, three. And then it doesn't look like Twitch is working. Let me see. Let me reconnect which hop over there. Hold on a second, sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Can you guys see my screen? Is it working? What in the heck is going on? Viewers. You can see and hear me on Twitch. Does the, I, I can see Twitch chat, but I'm not seeing the chat. Okay, okay, there's the chat. Did I get robbed? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm setting up and I'm setting up my shelves so they're just a little more clear with the with the characters. <laughs> the gremlins came and stole my toys. Okay. I don't know if Facebook is working. Let me reconnect to Facebook. Reconnect. Okay. All right, that should work. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's not stream. <laughs> Can you guys all see my screen, okay? Chat isn't responding. Really strange. Okay. But you guys can see my stri my screen. I guess you guys are re responding to my uh, shelf and things like that. Now it's working on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's like a slow train getting going today. <laughs> All right. Da, da, da. I don't know why. I don't know what's not working here. As Facebook is connecting, but I don't know. All right, we're just going to rock it. Hopefully it'll work. All right. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Another Monday. I'm, I'm trying to redo my, my uh, camera setup here. So that's why it's, it, I'm a little closer to the camera. Um... I'm just kind of working on just different setups and things. I'm always working on that kind of stuff. It's just fun. Um, let's see, where were we last week? So we were working on the hair. It's very, um, very round and, and uh, there, there's a section that I, I just unhid that I was playing with. So this is kind of what I was working on. Just starting to get some of these in here, and I thought I'd continue that, if you guys don't mind. And I'm just kind of working and chatting and um, crazy. Yes, and today I announced my Overwatch skin. So I worked on a Zenyatta baseball skin for Blizzard, and that was, that was a, so, so fun. So fun. The team over there is fantastic. Um, yeah, just the, the group over there is great. And they they kind of set you up for success. Like they've done so many skins now and they've done some, so much outsourcing now that they kind of have a system and they just know, they know their game really well and they know how to get outsourcers to do what they want. So um, thanks Moon Mix, how you doing? 
So it looks like YouTube and Twitch are working in the chat, but I don't see Facebook yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the guys over on uh, over at Pixelogic know. Okay. And if anybody's watching over on Facebook, can you please say hi? If this is working, because to me it's just a frozen screen over there. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it looks like a frozen screen. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I let them know. Hopefully they can hook it back up. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that skin was a lot of fun. So what they do is they give me a concept. Um, and then they give me a character block out. And it's already... Because they test the character in their game before... Okay. Oh, Pixel Kyle's working on it. All right, Pixel Kyle's working on it. There we go. Thanks, dude. Um, so it's interesting how they work because they actually test the skin in the game. So they have somebody in-house do a very, very low resolution version of it and just a hand painted. It doesn't really, it, it looks pretty good. I was, I was impressed by how far they took the actual block out and they, they rigged it up in the game and they tested it because they want to see what it looks like before they send it off. So then my job was to make it look good. So they just sent me the, the block out uh, mesh. I wish I could show you guys, but it's under NDA and uh, contract and all that. So I can't, I can't really talk about it a lot, but I can talk about some of the process a little bit. So anyway, it was my job to um, make it look high resolution. And then I had to retop everything and then get it back into the, the game engine. So they actually send me a version to, oh, thanks Moonmix. They send me a version in, uh, of their engine. It's a really light, light version of the Overwatch engine. And then I was, um, I was tasked to get the model into their engine, their version of that engine. And I used uh, pretty much ZBrush and Maya and Photoshop to do the whole thing. So. Um, and they're working on getting a, a substance painter pipeline going, but um, yeah, they they have everything down to a science there. So it's really really fun, really cool. Learned a lot, met a lot of cool nice people. Um, yep. So I'm I'm anxious to hopefully meet them uh, in person this year at some of the events. I'm going to CTN this year. I'm going to ZBrush Live or ZBrush Live ZBrush Summit. This year, so if any of you guys are going, I'd love to meet you. Come, it's in Hollywood this year. So, all right, here we go. Let's get this hair going, shall we? I'm gonna block out. Let's see. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the back of the hair. If I want to do some more individual strands, or if I want to just use that funky bunnies brush, or or just what, or if I want to build this nurse hat really quick. So, hey, what's up, Plumlee? What's up, Renald, over on YouTube? <laughs> okay, I hope everything's working now and you guys can see me. Um, so, Fabian, let's see, how is it, how is that for game Bob's, do you need a kind of watermark for copyright? How is this done? So, um, I, well, you're supposed to put copyright on every single image that you post from that company. So if you'll notice, you'll see that it says Blizzard 2018 copyright on the bottom of those images that I posted. So they require that. It just depends on the, um, it depends on the company, what they want and what they require. You had a problem using crease on the Band-Aid? So, what are you talking about? I guess I don't understand what... So, do you, know, do you not know how to crease, or what, what do you mean... Uh, what, what's the problem that you're having, I guess, would be a, would be a better question. Okay, let's, uh, let's, I'm just going to block this out, first of all. Get some, get some mass back here. Okay, I'm just twirling around my model, not doing anything. 
Got to get started. <laughs> okay. I need to, um, let's see. This looks like a single. So with the Z modeler tool, <laughs> all right, move mix. <laughs> that cracked me up. Okay, let's see. Uh, split, split, split on mass points. Okay. I just want to kind of get some volume back here. It's driving me crazy. So, so uh, creasing in the Z modeler brush. You clicked on it and it would, it wouldn't crease. So I'll show you with this sphere really quickly. So turn on your uh, polyframe, which is um, just shift F. We'll turn it on so you can see the edges. Then what you can do is go to Z modeler and you'll have to hover over an edge. Now that my camera's here, I'm used to it being back here. So I keep looking over there. <laughs> Okay, so if you hold down spacebar, you click on crease, it has these targets, these different targets. You have edge, edge loop partial, edge loop complete, and poly loop. So um, if you just have edge selected and you click on it, it's gonna give you an indication that it's creased like this. See that crease? And it just puts two kind of lighter lines on either side of that, that edge. You can click on all these edges and it's gonna crease it like this. So if you, if you hide and show, you're not going to notice that it's creased. The only time you're going to notice that it's creased is if you turn on either dynamic subdivisions like this, do that, or you add real subdivisions. So those are kind of the two things you need to watch out for. And now you can see that this is creased. Let me switch materials really quick so you can see it even better. See that? So basically I creased four edges in a, in a square, which when it subdivides, it makes a circle. Kind of crazy. So, hey, what's up, Chris? Um, yeah, if, if, you don't, if you don't subdivide it or have dynamic subdivision turned on, you're not gonna see it crease. So indication number one is these extra lines around your crease level. And then indication number two is you have to subdivide it to see it. Okay, um, so I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope that's where you were stuck. And you can just go clear creasing, uncrease all in the, in the magic menu there. Hey, what's up, Dan? Um, thanks so much, Chris. Uh, let's see, thanks, Janet. Have I been 3D printing my models lately? I'm actually very, very close to getting a 3D printer for my, my own personal work. Well, you can see this pirate printed right here, but um, I haven't, I wanna print that cowboy that I was working on with the, that's riding the dinosaur. I really wanna print him out. Um, he's gonna be quite the chore to get printed because I need to do some metal. I wanna put some metal supports in the dinosaur leg so he'll actually stand up. And um, let's see, so the reason I've, I've rearranged like my shelf. I'm messing with this right, right here just so I can display some of these characters a little more promptly and stuff. Um, but I actually have a desk back here that you guys can't see that I'm setting up for 3D printing. So that's why I've, uh, I'm kind of rearranging stuff. And what's funny is this shelf's actually pulled out away from the wall and facing the camera a little more because I was, I was experimenting with uh, the silhouettes of these characters. See how it's on, on black right now? So, um, oh, I'm getting a message from Kyle. One second here. A new post? Oh, a new post. Okay, looks like Facebook was having issues. All right, all good. Okay. Hey, what's up, Rose? Rohit, what's up, man? Uh, let's see. I need to, let me see if I can just reconnect Facebook. I might have to shut down my Facebook chat app and restart it really quick to get it to work. But, uh, you know what? I'm not going to post on Facebook today, I guess. Kind of a, hey, there's Kevin Dillon. All right. 
All right, looks like it's working. Thanks for saying something, Kevin. Awesome, okay. Facebook was having a slow go. You know, Facebook is kind of hard to stream to from if you're multi-streaming. It's, it's easy to stream to if you're just like on your phone or something, but uh, it's, uh, it's kind of hard when you're doing a restream, which is chatting or streaming to multiple places. Um, okay, I'm just, again, I'm just moving the sphere around. I gotta, I gotta focus. There, there's a lot going on right now. I'm telling you what, oh my gosh. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to reorganize my, my course a little bit and figure out where to take it from here. I really want to do some big updates to it. Maybe even a whole new character for it. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. But yes, like uh, Moonmix was saying, enrollment is open right now. It's going to be open till this Friday, the 17th at midnight uh, Pacific Standard Time. So if you guys are interested, now's the time. Might block in that hat too. Coming in on her neck. Hey, Damien. <laughs> yes, I'm talking too much today. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Get going, huh? We we're having some technical difficulties going, and I like to answer questions when you guys have questions, so. You get what you pay for, I guess. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I want, I want more resolution on this. So I can subdivide this once, which is fine. I think I'll just do that. Then delete the lower subdivision level. Now it's higher and we have more geometry. There we go. Uh, Marcos, I don't, I like to do it, but I don't do it enough, not even close to enough. I would, love, I would love to do it more, but uh, it's just easiest for me because I'm, I'm on kind of a time, I don't have too much time, so digital is just easier for me to crack open and start rocking it. <laughs> Bob Ross style, yep. <laughs> Yep, I enjoy answering your questions, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> yeah, no symmetry with clay. But honestly, that's kind of a good thing sometimes. When you're, when you're really trying to, uh, when you're trying to experiment and find shapes and stuff like that, sometimes not having symmetry on is a good thing. Kind of uh, messing with these block out shapes, trying to get these flows happening. Okay. Uh, let's see. Why don't I use Dynamesh for this first shaping? Because it's too dense. Honestly, that's, that's all there is to it. It's just too dense. I like to keep my polygons light like this. And Dynamesh is too heavy. Um, do I use the Wacom Express Key Remote? Uh, I don't, actually. I, I put everything just out on my screen right here so um, I can get to it really easily. And then I have a keyboard tray that's underneath my desk that I, I, I can't really see it right here, but... Um, I have my, my hotkeys on my left hand on my keyboard because I just use my keyboard too much. I just, uh, I'm used to it. So I'm kind of sitting like, like this when I'm working. I use my hotkeys over here. 
my pin over here. So it just works. Works pretty good for me. When you get yourself sorted and need to get into my course, yeah, man. Do it. And we just we just had the um, the student challenge. I do student challenges every once in a while, and we just announce those. So uh, Moon Mix, I'm going to give you the link for that. Not to keep pulling you guys away from the stream, but um, I wrote a blog post on it. Pretty cool. And I had the students do a bust based on uh, Randy Bishop designs. And they had uh, <laughs> Rohit. <laughs> So there's, there's a blog post um, that I wrote up based on the student work. The students just killed it. They did so good this time. I had almost 30 participants. Here, I'll show you that skin here in a minute. But yeah, check out the student work here. This is so great. These are the, the students from my, I teach an online course called 3D Character Workshop. The enrollment's open right now if you, if you guys are interested. And Moonmix is posting the links on there. Thank you, Moonmix. <laughs> um, and uh, this is a blog that I wrote up, and I, I usually get what I call celebrity judges. They're essentially friends of mine that are professionals in the industry, like uh, Bryce LaVille St. Martin and Tyler Boyard and Leslie Vandenbroek, uh Yon Joan Lee, Lee from Blue Sky. She's a new one. And, uh, and then Randy Bishop was a judge himself. So then I, I had them uh, judge these entries and give some feedback um, and then I kind of tallied them up and worked it out and yeah they're uh, they I, I couldn't be happier so I just want to show you guys the student work and this is the winner this is the one that won and uh, uh, to a lot of the student surprise this one won and the I'm, I'm actually gonna go over the reasons why this won in a, uh, a student only kind of stream thing um, but the, as, as a high level, the reason it won is because it matches the concept the best. So, uh, yeah, it just keeps going and going and going. There's, like I said, almost 30 entries. So, yeah, they're, they're really nice. I mean, look at this. this um, Matt Dunn had time to make all three of these. So, really good. And, uh, yeah, Stephen Clark went and did some hair on this guy. It turned out really great. Um, Batman. Yep, solid stuff. Great stuff. Love it. So, anyway, um, all done in ZBrush. They're just busts. Some of them are rendered in Keyshot. Some of them are rendered in other things like Arnold and ZBrush and stuff like that. So, anyway, that's that. And uh, here's the skin I did for Blizzard. So, uh, this is Zen Yada. This is for the Summer Games. It was just announced a couple days ago. And I also did the weapon. I did the baseball. And if you see these stitches right here, I actually had to make a stitch brush. I'm going to show you that really quick. Let's see. So it's right here. So check out, check out this stitch brush. See that? <laughs> I made that inside ZBrush and, uh, for, the, for the baseball stitches. That's how I did that. So, uh, let's see. Oh, nice visual on the characters. Thanks, Marcos. You tend to use drawing ideas from other artists, or do you create your own characters from scratch? Janet, usually I, I am modeling other people's art because that's, that's, uh, that's how you get work in this industry. So, for the most part. There, there are people that are asked to do concepting in 3D, but typically I'm just doing a character model that means... Um, I'm doing uh, other people's concepts. So let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, thanks, Moon Mix. Yeah. <laughs> Freelance. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. Love to have you in there. 
Okay. New messages. Man, you guys are you guys are flooding me with messages today. If I if I haven't answered your question, please feel free to post it again. Thanks, Janet. I don't know anything to use ZBrush is enough by watching YouTube tutorials be enough professional. Um, it depends on it depends on how well you learn and how much you can, um, you know, I guess learn from those videos. The problem with YouTube videos that are free is they're kind of all over the place. They're, you have to kind of navigate your own way through all of them. So um, that's actually why I made my course is so it's, it's nice and cut and clear and you can understand um, in a nice way workflow how to learn zbrush and what to do and when and that kind of thing so um yeah but you you completely can i recommend uh, michael pavlovich he's got some really great uh beginning youtube tutorials that'll get you started so um those yeah those are really good oh the audio and the camera is delayed did i did i mess with that hmm. i want i don't know why that is let me look at it really quick. I don't want to mess with it midstream, but <laughs> oh, did it did it kill it? Oh. <laughs> Great. Now my is my face stuck? I don't know. I think my face is stuck now. Ah, uh, I killed it. <laughs> anyway, I, my camera's broken now, I think. Sorry, guys. Is it slightly delayed? Now it's gone. It doesn't work anymore. I'd have to restart it. Oh, there we are. Weird. Okay, I'll, I'll work on it off stream. Just, all right. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's get back. Let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block in this hat really quick. Um, I'm just going to block it in on, right on the top of this hair here. Um, somebody was asking about these brushes. I make these brushes available over on my website. Um, there's... Uh, let's see. There's, I'm, I'm trying out a new page. Let me show you guys. Okay. Can you guys try this for me on this stream? Try this and see if it works. I'm giving out my brushes on this new page. And it's just, I'm just making it easier for you guys to get them. And I made a new graphic and stuff. It looks like this. So it's just much easier. You can just fill out your stuff and say, give me the brushes. And I also give you my user interface and my ruler file. So if you want to try it, uh, I just posted the link. And you can also go get them on my main page too. So either place. Either place. Okay, thanks, Stefan. Uh, what did I use on the front hair? It was just stretched out spheres. That's all. Yeah, poor balding girl. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Okay, now she's just wearing a sphere hat. Uh, Doug, no. Oh, are you saying Mike May? Mike May? Um, I, I never lived with him, but I did hang out with him a lot. We worked together at a place called Sapphire. Back in the day. Okay, what happened to my... Okay, I need to organize this. Let me fill... Fill this... Fill this. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Ruit. Oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> it's this hat. It's my golfer hat, I guess. Okay, there's this. Um, now, a lot of people ask, and I know, I know the back of the hat doesn't look like this. This is just blocked in. So, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to make this little piece that's in front that kind of wraps around. And I'm just looking for like a, a block out of it. You know, just a, a base. I'm just going to block it out here. Let me see, maybe. I gotta make sure it's uh, symmetrical. I want it right in the center of her head. So I just did a mirror and weld on there. Then what I can do is um, when you have something like that, like the front of the hat, what you can do is like, you're like, well, how do I build that? There's nothing there. I can't, I can't put it on top of anything. So what you do is actually uh, you, you make some temporary geometry to draw on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this hat piece that I made and just duplicate it. And then I'm going to scale it up. Put my scale guy in the middle. Hit home, get him in the middle and scale it up. And just kind of make it temporary the size that I want. Temporarily the size that I want. So I'm just kind of looking at this front surface and I could actually, uh, there's one of two ways I can do this. I can either redraw the topology on the surface, which is what I typically do, or if there's geometry there that I could use, I can, I can just use that. And you can see that these have some, some poly loops already happening. So I'm gonna solo this and grab my select lasso. And I'm just gonna hide everything that I want to keep. Maybe like that. Something like this. And then just uh, delete hidden. And here's the starting of what I want. Now what I can do is just kind of rework this. Turn on double so I can see it. And I need to get some reference to see what a nurse's hat actually looks like and how it folds in on itself. Like I said, I'm just blocking this out right now. So I don't care too much about the technicalities of how it works. And then see this piece right here? This is left over from something else, not that. Um, this one, there we go. Okay, so now that I get the hat in place, I can start to, um, you know, I can start to make the hair come out from underneath it and actually look like it's working correctly. And you can see that this is concave rather than convex. And this is convex. So I need to smooth this, smooth this out. But if I, if I do it with the current smooth strengths, it's going to go way too fast. See that? Boo, way too fast. So I can just hold down shift and I can mess with my Z intensity up here. I, you can turn it way down to like five, six, even two or three. And then the smooth will just go slower. We'll have more control over it. Like that. Then it's actually being kind of pulled out around the ear up here. So do the same, something similar and just kind of pull it out. Let's see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hey, what's up, Daniel Sam 3D? Finally catch me live. Awesome work with the skin. Thank you very much. Uh, when using the topple brush, any way to fix? Oh, any way to fix it if you won't create a square or rectangle? Let me bring. Uh, what the things are called? Hey, what's up, Kagri? How are you? Apologize if I don't know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Did I ask you that before? You have all the cool symbols. There we go, that's a little better. Um, but now it's too tall. So, some things you can do, you can go to the, uh, I can just delete this top one like this, and it's shorter all of a sudden, boom. 
um, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, or if I wanted to keep all the geometry inside, I could just uh, use my scale on, in the gizmo and scale it down, but I think I'm just gonna do that and just delete hidden. Now we kind of have that working hat. Um, now when we have, now that we have that in place, we can just start uh, moving the hair and getting it to be underneath that nurse hat. Call him CBG. <laughs> what do you prefer? Or how do you say your name, Kagri? I don't know. I'd like to figure it out, though. I'm just holding Alt and tapping on the object to select it. And if I want to do one strand at a time, I can just turn topological on. I'm using move elastic rather than just the regular move because... <laughs> Are you just CBG? All right. That works. As long as you're not offended by it. Uh, so you can just... The, the way the... What am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm kind of struggling today. Sorry. Uh, the way that move elastic works is it, it kind of has a bigger fall off overall. I talked about this during the last stream. And regular move, let's go to regular move, it kind of just is, is more centered around that brush. I'm using a big brush, and you can see how that works. But if I go to move elastic and I do the same thing, you can see the fall off goes greater and it falls off further on down the length of that strand and it's kind of gushy a little bit too like just the way it works I don't know another way to describe it but it's kind of gushy when you're moving it around you kind of smoosh it around and so that works really well for hair when you're working on that okay now that I have this hat I'm actually going to um, I want to push this back in I think they're kind of flat on the back. I need to get, again, I need to, I, I've looked at some reference previously, but I don't have any up right now. I'm just kind of uh, guessing. Something like that. Gushy, that's my word, gushy. Kind of gushy. <laughs> uh, yep, I'm all, I'm all about the technical. I, <laughs> I think that's, that's part of the reason why people say I sound like Bob Ross too, because he's just like, happy little tree lives here. You know, he doesn't get very technical. That's the same, same when, I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking about anatomy and muscles and stuff. I'm all about like, you know, this, this muscle that, that's here. I don't really <laughs> know the names and stuff, so technical. Okay. From the side, I'm looking at the silhouette. And usually when I do hair, I like to have it peak. Uh, let's see. Oh, mask lasso, select. Okay, I like to have the hair peak kind of like right here, right in that area. So it, it goes curved, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a peak right here. And then it curves around, and then there's another peak right, right here. So in this area, so it's going to peak about here and then drop down because it's it's kind of weighted down on your skull and then it cuts back down in the back. So, oh, the I meet. <laughs> yep. I meet trademark. <laughs> uh. Yeah, my my uh, my old art director, John Diesta, would would say I meet too. Funny. And palm and, and this is this is thumb meat right here. This the palm right there. That see that that piece? <laughs> it's thumb meat. <laughs> hey, what's up, Federico? How are you? Hey from Syria, how are you? <laughs> yeah, Doug, right? <laughs> Gushiness. What? Gushiness? What in the world? Okay. 
Um, now that I have that blocked in, I want to start kind of blocking in her neck a little bit more. Um, Just to have kind of a base. All right, then I'm just gonna kind of, uh, gonna kind of fake this. Now, you, now you're making me want to make up words for things. <laughs> like the throat thingy, the throat pit. Man, she's got a long neck. It's like way long down in here. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of a hint of clavicles. You know what? I think I don't want them that sharp. I'm gonna use the cloth brush. Not always used for cloth. You know, and I want to, I want to bring that down even. Throat curb. Uh, hey, Mortar, how are you doing, man? Uh, yeah, it is different, actually. The snake hook brush, it's, I wish I could explain it. You just kind of have to do some experimenting with it and, and see how it feels. But snake hook, uh, it wants to do this kind of thing, <laughs> right? Look at that. That's what snake hook does. Even with a bigger brush, it kind of, it, it pulls it like silly putty. You know, it's just kind of like, where uh, move elastic with the same size does it like this. It doesn't really have a smooth kind of fall off. It just grabs it and pulls it. So I, sh I should say the elastic has a more consistent fall off where a snake hook is kind of more spongy if that makes sense spongy technical term spongy all right gonna work row it are you st are you trying to start something <laughs> Are you trying to start a flat earthers convention in here? I th <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. I think I think flat earthers are the largest troll group that there is. <laughs> they because it's like they know it's it's like when you know something's not true and you're just gonna say it just to get a rise out of people. You know, that's the I think that's the only reason people even bring it up is because they just want people to go. Uh-uh, you know, <laughs> that's not true. So, yeah, I think it's just a big, uh, kind of a troll joke, a big, a, a large group of trolls getting together. Hey, watch this. Watch, we'll get them all riled up. Hey, what's up, Cloud Soda? I actually, um, these are pre-recorded, or these are recorded. So you can go to uh, pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush live and check out all of my past recordings. Let's go there. Um, let me see, I'm gonna find it. Okay, there it is. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. So it's gonna show this stream for a minute. See, there we are. Pause this. So if you go up here to presenters, so pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush live, you go to presenters, then you'll see everybody that streams on Pixelogic's Twitch channel. Like uh, there's myself right here and Danny, Ashley, there's Michael Pavlovich right, right there. And Brendan, if you're into uh, uh, more realistic characters, Timothy, he does some game stuff. Yeah, just go on down here and um, where is Eamon? So Eamon's a, a fairly new streamer and he streams an hour before I do. Well, actually two hours before I do. 
And he talks about 3D printing and stuff like that. So that's a really, really good one to watch. Um, yeah, lots and lots of fantastic streamers on here. So if you want to see my past streams, just go right here to past broadcasts and schedule. And you'll see all of my older streams. And this is the one where I actually build out her face. And this one I actually met, built out the starting of her hair. And this one that we're watching right now is going to be the finishing of her hair. But you can see that I, I did this. I, I spent a lot of time on this cowboy dinosaur one. So there's a lot of past streams that are of him. And uh, Ooh La La was working on. And then I kind of sprinkled some stuff throughout there uh, when I, when I, while I was working on that cowboy. So anyway, fun stuff. If you want to see some some uh, older stuff, feel free to check it out. Okay. <laughs> you get my emails. Yep, you do. You do. Anything from 3D Character Workshop is me and my spam. I hope it doesn't feel like spam. All right. I do want to make those clavicles a little more apparent. There we go. <laughs> a cone. Uh, there you go, one Mac. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, so now that we have that um, kind of blocked out, you can use this clip brush too if you ever want to clip off your base. Because this is a this is a bust, right? And this I like how um, Lord Grizz has kind of cut off her. Her body and made it kind of look like an outfit that, that's on her so you can just kind of do that something like that but this this curve is really sharp and weird so we can fix that yeah clip brush is clip brush is an interesting one because you you want to so when you drag it out like this you can see that it has a dotted line and a gradient right um, the gradient is going essentially going to take all of the geometry that's on the gradient side and it's going to squish it up to that dotted line. So that's kind of how that works. And if you go this direction across the center line, it's going to mess it up. See like that? Because it's trying to grab everything on the opposite side of the mirrored line and pull it over to this side. And so it's just going to crisscross and make a mess. So as long as you're facing your gradient away from the center line, you should be fine. Yeah, I'm just using the polish brush to fix that little, little kind of whoop there. Okay. That's not too bad. It's not as steep as this one, but I don't mind it. Maybe if I pull it up and kind of give a hint of, of shoulders a little bit. Might look a little better. There we go. Happy little shoulders. Looks like we're at 171 people watching today. Thank you very much. I know you guys have a lot better things to do, maybe, hopefully, than watch me on, on a live stream. But I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me today. I guess that kind of sounds like Bob Ross too. I'm a fan of Bob Ross. I'm just trying to straighten out this sterno muscle here. All right, are you trying to make hard angles? I, you know, I should scope Bob Ross. That's a good idea. Like a, like a really good caricature of him, right? <laughs> and a squirrel. <laughs> That'd be a good idea, man. Okay, so now that I have this, I want to, I think I'm actually going to use the Funky Bunnies brush to finish off her hair. 
But before I do that, I, I want to pull her hat down even further. Look at the distance. It's almost touching her ear. It's riding on her ear. So I really need to pull that down. And I might try the Move Elastic. Let's see how that does. So the thing with the Move Elastic brush is it's fast. It's very, very fast. And you can't really turn the intensity down to fix it. You just have to be delicate with it. Because if you turn down the intensity brush, it doesn't behave like the same brush anymore. So you just need to be careful. Okay, and I want this, I want to do a thick to thin. So I want it to be thick on the sides and kind of go taper up and be thicker in the front. And then have her hat in the back be a little taller. You can see it from the front. Yeah, so see, look how, look how quick this, this is how fast that uh, Move Elastic brush is. It's so quick. And it even jiggles a little bit if you're, if you're not careful. It just goes cr like crazy. So just be, just be delicate. Very delicate. Hey, what's up, a tentative slug? How are you doing? Oh, da, da, da. Slice. Oh, yeah. So the difference between the clip brush and the slice brush is, thanks me, <laughs> is uh, the, the slice brush will actually cut it and then do a close holes on it. But the close holes will be made of triangles. And the clip brush actually just, they should call it the smush brush or the smash brush because it just takes everything on the side of the gradient and smashes it into that line. It just smashes it. So, <laughs> oh, Rowan, all right, good enough, <laughs> fair enough, I should say, they should rename it, yep, Jello brush and smush brush, brush brush, <laughs> all the names, okay, and now that we have this hat doing its thing, we can actually add some thickness if we want to, and then add that little, uh, medical plus sign there. Okay. So how we add thickness. Um, there's a couple ways. You can do the Z modeler and just hover over a poly and then hit extrude poly group all and then just kind of pull it out like this and it gives it thickness like that. Or you can even push it inwards. If you want it to go in in but when you do that and you have double sided on anytime you go inwards with an extrude it's going to flip the normals so if i turn double off you can see that the normals are flipped like this and i'm going to save it really quick before i do this because sometimes it likes to crash so draw as five i'm going to save this and then i'm going to go down to um display properties and then flip and that'll flip the normals. So there we go. Now we have thickness and we have our normals flipped and we could, uh, we could do a couple things with this edge. Oh, thanks, Thababu. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh yeah, if you guys wanna see it, I have it over on my art station right here. This is the, the Zenyatta skin that I just finished up. And uh, well, I, I didn't just finish it up. I finished it up a while ago, but they just announced it for their summer event. You can go, you play Overwatch, you can go get it and unlock it. But uh, yeah, I, that was a fantastic experience. I learned a ton. Um, and I learned a lot about texturing. So... And texturing in Photoshop and how to use different kind of maps and things like that. Um, so, yep, it's it's uh, pretty it's pretty uh, fun experience. Experience, and I love the Blizzard team. They're so great, so gracious. Made some new friends. They're awesome. Okay, so I can either crease these edges. Uh, to keep that flat edge. So if I hit dynamic right now, it's going to look like this. And if that's the look you're going for, this kind of this nice rounded look, and I kind of like it because it's soft. Um, 
and it, it looks it looks pretty nice and this one I can just kind of turn on and then what I'm going to do back here is I'll probably do there's these two flaps that kind of come over and fold and hook and button this whole thing folds in on itself and I'll probably I don't know if I'll actually make it look like the actual hat like you know make it functional <laughs> as far as how the hat works uh, Oh, Tim, that's, yeah, I did, I, I, I created that skin for Blizzard. So I was just sharing that on the stream here. So I did all of the cloth. I did all of this cloth inside of ZBrush. All the cloth, everything. I did the hard, the hard edge stuff inside of Maya. Um, but I did these pants inside of, of ZBrush. And I made a special brush. I was just showing these guys, I'll show you again. But I made a special brush. For, oh, that's where that... That thing's coming from. You guys are doing all the likes on here, <laughs> and I keep hearing this. Do 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 do. That's what it is. I better I better close it. It's probably making a bunch of noise. Um. Anyway, I have a special brush that I made for these. Um. These stitches. So anyway, I'm gonna close this. But if you go to my if you go to ArtStation slash here, I'll, I think uh, Moon Mix has been posting that, but. Hey, Chicken Hawk, thanks. Yeah, it's a little closer. Uh, okay, I'm gonna shut that down so the, the little clink sound goes away. All right. Oh, print, print the actual hat for myself so I can like wear it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be attractive. Okay. I keep looking at this, this hat and it's not the shape I want it to be. But, okay, I was going to show you guys the, uh, the, the, the insert multi-mesh brush. See this stitch brush right here? Yeah, check this out. See that? <laughs> That's the stitch brush that I made for Zenyatta, the, the baseball. So it's, it was just one little piece, and then I, I made it so it, it repeated a pattern. So, anyway. Yep, that was fun. That was fun to figure out because it wrapped all the way around the ball and it couldn't be mirrored because it had to go a certain direction. Um, just, just Photoshop. Photoshop. They, they're working on a, a substance painter pipeline, but it's just Photoshop for now. Good old, old school. Because they're, yeah, they, they use a lot of uh, proprietary stuff. So... Have I changed this hat? Uh, yeah, I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, honestly, I, ha I bought a whole bunch that are just like this one. And then I have some that are slightly different designs. But they're all like, I call them my old man hats or my golfer hats. Even though I don't golf. Let's see. Did you only use brushes to render the different textures or did you use actual textures? Uh, so... I guess I don't understand the question, but there was a lot of texturing work inside of Photoshop. So a lot of, I, I, I can't really go into it on the stream, but there's a lot of, uh, lot of layers and masking and gradients and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, leather texture. So it's, yeah, it's all done with layers and, and actually Blizzard sent me their proprietary brushes. Some of the texturing was brushes their own proprietary stuff, um, which obviously I can't share, but yeah, they have, their, they have a lot of proprietary stuff there. And you can see it. Um, yes, I did. I, I actually did some poly painting on, on Zenyatta. And I did start there. I'm just tucking, tucking in these hairs a little better around the hat, so they actually look like they make sense. Okay. And then I just want to continue these hairs around the edge here. <laughs> Thanks, Joey, and welcome to the stream, man. Yeah, Cloud, uh, Cloud soda, it's, it's, it's its own art into itself. Texturing is its own beast. 
So I show the, in, in my course, I cover the, the light way to do it. So I cover how to bake your maps in Marmoset, how to get them into Photoshop and how to get them onto your character and into a game engine. And I cover how to do like the really high level stuff like shiny and matte and colored and that kind of thing. But I don't get into how to, um, how, how to make textures kind of grungy or dirty or uh, like different things like that. Um, yeah, so that's, I, I go over texturing, but not deep. I'd like to eventually though. Okay, here we go. Let's do, let's, let's grab this and I'm gonna Z remesh it. Hey, what's up, Sandro? <laughs> how did I, how did I make the pictures for the custom brushes? I just made those in Photoshop. Um, I just, it took me a while, but I just took a sphere and I, I put on the sphere what the brush actually did. And then I took it into Photoshop and I, I made them. And then I put an, a white outline on the top of those. So, and then just made an image out of them. These brushes, you can go get them from my website uh, at 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you'd like. I give them away for free. Okay. Uh, do you think having the detail in the eye, especially with the iris muscles veins, suits this type of stylized sculpt? Or does it break the overall theme? Yeah, I would not go into... So for every character, there's kind of a level of stylization and a level of realism. And you kind of have to pick that level and use it as your guide for everything. If you... But... There, there is a mixture that you can do, and typically that is like, you can do a stylized character with realistic textures. And you'll see that in film more than in games. So, uh, like on The Incredibles or something like that, you'll, the, the characters are very, very stylized, but their textures are quite realistic. So you can see kind of the sweater, um, if, if they're wearing a shirt or a sweater or something, you can actually see the threads on the sweater, that kind of stuff, and their, their skin is kind of, kind of realistic, but it just depends on where you're wanting to take it. So I typically like to do uh, stylized textures and stylized character at the same time. I don't, I don't tend to take my textures too realistic, uh, but it's, it's fun either way, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm going to Z-remesh this guy, the girl, her hair. Da, da, da. Somebody was asking, what is the difference between the Z remesher over here and remesh by Z remesher that's inside of the gizmo? So turn this gizmo on. If you click on this gear, you'll see remesh by Z remesher. If you click that guy, this is the exact same thing as Z remeshing over in the menu. They use the exact same properties. So like the keep groups, if that's turned on or half or same, any of this kind of stuff, this is all the same. Whether or not you're using remesh or just the regular Z remesher button. The difference, the only difference is this cone right here, this target polygon count cone. So this just kind of gives you an extra level of precision when it comes to how many polygons you have or how many you want. And it also remembers where your mesh was before you hit Z remesh so you can go back and, and try another take on that cone at a different resolution and it'll give you a different Z remesh rather than having to hit Control Z and then adjusting this number right here and then doing it again. So. Let's see, I'm gonna crank this down and then I'm just gonna move this cone. I don't want it sym ah, I can't talk today. I don't want it symmetrical. That's what these cones are for. I don't want it symmetrical. So I'm gonna leave that cone alone and I'm just gonna pull on this one up to about, let's try 3000 and let go. There we go. And it doesn't look too bad. Let's see. Oh, hey, Felipe. Thanks, man. Is there a way to make these in ZBrush kind of handy when you get a lot of brushes? Uh, no, 
I, I, I always make them in, it's a combination of ZBrush and Photoshop is how I make them. So, and then under your brush, whatever brush, you just load up the brush you want, like this one. And then you, uh, you just go to, let's see, where is it? Oh, select icon, there it is, I couldn't read it. So if you click on select icon, you can go grab the, the brush icon and make that your new icon. So that's how I made all these icons, is I just, you know, I just made a little square. They want them to be square, and then you can just go pick it. So uh, There's a lot of technical stuff that goes into Substance Designer Painter, like learning what OpenGL is, tessellation, alphas, yep. Is there a book or keywords to understand these things in its entirety? Uh, for example, should I search game architecture or game computer science? Uh, that's a big question. Um, for, the technical, for the technical stuff on Substance Painter and Substance Designer, I would actually go over there to their website, and uh, Wes is the guy who does a bunch of their tutorials, and learn Substance from Wes. They have some fantastic stuff. Um, but as far as like, there's not a book that I know of that just has all of the technical keywords to my knowledge. That's a good question though. Um, if you're doing a model for say portfolio, does it matter if you Z remesh it or not? Yes, it does, Cloud. It matters a lot. Um, it depends. If you're trying to get a job in the game industry and you're showing a Z remeshed mesh as a game mesh, uh, you're not gonna get work. So I'll just put that out right now. You need to have your mesh be done by hand to, to look and work the best way it can possible and deform the best it can. So that's why retopology is still done by hand for game stuff because there is not an automatic solution yet that will do what you can do by hand. So if you're, if you're going to be doing 3D printing, or doing it for illustration or something like that, then the topology does not matter. So you don't have to worry about the Z remesh mesh if, if that's what you're going for. But if you're trying to get a game job of making game characters or film characters or TV characters, your mesh needs to be beautiful. So uh, yeah, that's a good question though. <laughs> And also your UVs, you want to have your UVs done by hand as well. So don't use a UV master here in, in, in ZBrush. You can do that for temp UVs if you need temp UVs. It does a fantastic job at making UVs very quickly, but they're not optimized for game engines, so I would stay away from that too. Uh, yeah, Wes, um, there's, there's a beginner tutorial on, uh, on the Substance website that's a, a lantern. And Wes had made that lantern tutorial. It's really, really good for breaking down how Substance Designer works. It's very technical. It's not character related, but you can, you can draw from it and uh, kind of figure out how Substance works. Watching that tutorial. I think he, he said he just barely did one for uh, Linda, Linda.com as well. It's a, like a tractor or something. Okay, let's see. Yeah, no automatic perfect retop or UVs. Nope. <laughs> uh, when following tutorials from different artists, I see some prefer to use X normal for UVs or 3ds Max for UVs. Oh, so X normal does not do UVs. X normal only bakes maps. So honestly, wherever you do your UVs doesn't matter. It what matters is how well your UVs are done. So you can do them in Max. The program doesn't matter, it's just a tool. Um, I, I would recommend against ZBrush for doing UVs because the UVs are harder to manipulate and manage and control. So it works, ZBrush works really well with other programs that, that use UVs or do UVs like, um, like 3D Studio Max or Maya or, or Moto or something like that. So um, it doesn't matter where you do them, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's, um, let's start to do these hairs. I've got almost an hour. We'll see if we can get them done. Hairs, hairs. This one. 
Uh, Rogue Kill UV is actually pretty decent. It's not, it's not too bad. But the, the brand new UV maker in Maya 2018, that's what I used for Zenyatta, and it's fantastic. It's, they've really, really upped their game on how to do UVs, and it's, that's, I did the whole thing in Maya. So. That, if that gives you any idea of where to do them. Okay, I'm going to try this wide cover one. Um, Dominus, uh, seams matter less these days. Uh, it's, it's actually better to break things down based on materials rather than where the seams are. You, want, you still want to hide them in the cracks and crevices or in between things. Like, um, you know, like, like the edge of this neck, for example, or up underneath this neck right here, you could end one. But hiding seams um, is, is less of a thing now than it used to be. So, like, I would recommend them doing your UVs based on materials more. So, when I say based on materials, I'm talking about UV your metals and put all your metals kind of in, in one section of your UV map and put all your plastics in another section, put all your leathers in another section, all your skin in another section. I just kind of, you know, do it that way. Um, yeah, you know what? Blender is just fine, too. Blender works great for, for UVs and that kind of thing. So it, it, it's just a tool. Just a tool. Okay, I am going to... I, I need to change the stroke on this hair. Can, can you see that? So it's, it's really skinny and then it goes to thick and it's not working. You need to change that stroke and I forgot to do it. I'm going up to stroke, curve modifiers, click this curve fall off and it's going from thin to thick right here where I need to, no, not do that. Okay, I need to grab this dot, put it to medium, grab this one, put it to medium so it's kind of the same. That's what I want right there. Same thickness overall. Hey, Kareem, you can use them in conjunction with each other. You don't have to choose one or the, over the other. Um, because ZBrush is kind of the best digital sculpting software out there. And then a lot of people will render inside of Blender Cycles out of ZBrush. So you can push it over there and render out of there. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, most, most production pipelines use like five different pieces of software or more. So it just depends on what you're doing and what your needs are. Okay, so I'm just going to, sometimes it, it won't stick to the surface, sometimes it will. Uh, yeah, and then you can just play with it. Like, uh, and sometimes you'll just kind of lay the hair down and that's what it's going to look like. And then you just kind of tap on the surface to say that's what you want. Now you'll notice that the blob that I started with is masked. So I can separate that hair by hitting split mask groups or split unmasked points it will put it in its new group and then i just hit the down arrow and i go and now i have it selected and now i can just start uh, manipulating it with that move elastic brush again and i can put this whole thing into its own single poly group now just by hitting Control w it'll put the whole hair strand in its own poly group to manage a little easier Yeah, so there's the Funky Bunnies brush. Made by Benjamin Hale and edited by Funky Bunnies. And you can see kind of how this, this um, how stretchy this move elastic is. It's just really great for doing hair because it doesn't introduce those lumps and bumps, or the warbles, is what I like to call them. It, it stays away from the warbles. So, Attentive Slug, I'm hoping to start one in September. September 1st is probably when the next one. Okay, let's see. That one. Then I'll do another one. I'll select this hair. Do another strand. 
Oh, here's another one. I made I made an insert multi mesh brush that was the cleat. So see that cleat? That's a cleat for uh, Zenyatta's shoes. So I I can't open him up in here because he's prep or he's NDA. So I can only show you little parts. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Hair, hair. Look at this flat triple. He's going to go for the flat triple. Kind of twisting. I want it kind of flat and straight. And you can also continue these, uh, these hair lengths. So say I wanted it a little longer. You can come down here and see that little dot. You can't really click on that dot and drag it because you'll move the whole hair like that or the whole strand. So you have to be slightly off where you start to see that little red line. Then you can click and continue down around. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always work. There we go. That's how you lengthen it. Is uh, Twitch having issues, me? Go split unmass points again, hit the down arrow to select it. You can see it's kind of twisting, and that's I do want that. Um, I have a uh, I have a pix or a Pinterest page. So look for Shane Olson art over on Pinterest, and I have a page just full of good topology if you want to check that out. Dominus, you should get that looked at. <laughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I'm going to turn on transparent so I can see this. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty difficult depending on if it's male or female or what, what the pose is, what it's doing. On your end? Okay. <laughs> sorry, Dominus. Couldn't resist. Um, but are, if you're talking about loops, talking about edge loops, what, what you want to do is think about it like a dryer hose. You know what a dryer hose looks like? Dryer hose. Here. We're going to look one up. Okay. This is a dryer hose. Let's see. Yeah, like this, right? So... <laughs> When I'm doing my when I'm doing my mesh uh, retopology, you want to think about like when your arm comes out of your shoulder, you want to think about the loops like a dryer hose, and they don't go across the shoulder and from the neck across the chest. Just make a loop that goes from the armpit up around the shoulder, and then just continue that dryer hose look all the way down your arm. And it's the same with your your pelvis. So, but your pelvis where the legs connect up into the hips is on an angle like, like this, like a V. Then the dryer hose comes out and goes down on either side. And they just kind of hook uh, together like that, if, if that makes any sense at all. But yeah, dryer hose. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, thanks, Dark Place. Thanks so much. We're just making, we're just trying to finish off this hair. I'm using the Move Elastic Brush. It sound like a, a golf narrator. And he's using the Move Elastic now. I'm in a weird mood today. <laughs> every, every artist needs a golf, golf narrator. Talk over their sh shoulder. Yeah, it kind of makes it easy, easier. It's a fun, this is my new favorite hair approach. Oh, gosh. 
It's getting hot in here. I'm thinking about turning on my fan. Okay. Then after you get this, you can always come back and see how it lost some of those edges. You can come back and either keep the edges like they are or repinch them. Repinch them like this. Uh, oh, it came back with a few issues. Ah. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Let's see. What would you recommend with a sword point? How do you make it thicker to print? So, a sword, what you do is um, instead of making it. Oh, I got clip. Okay, hold on. Okay, if you're looking down the sword's blade, like if I was aiming it at the camera like this, um, the profile of it, instead of being thin like this, right, you could cheat it to make it so it's 3D printable. And you just make it thicker like this, like a triangle, if you're looking down it, and then taper it as it goes down. So. Like, you can see this sword that I worked on here. Um, let me see if I can go full cam. All right, sorry, I'm back. So <laughs> I, I changed to this lavalier microphone right here, and, the, and when I go to full screen, my audio isn't, is, goes away. So I need to add that, and I don't want to sit and add it right now. Anyway, I'll explain to you what I was saying. So <laughs> in, a smaller, in a smaller image down here, maybe I can grab it and just make it bigger right here like this. There we go for a minute. My... my uh, Looks like my camera focus is about right here. Okay, yeah, the sound's back because like I said, this lavalier microphone right here, it's only set to my, this screen. Anyway, technical crap. So anyway, uh, what I was trying to say is, see this collar right here? The collar, I made it thin on the very farthest outer edge and then it gets thicker as it comes into the face so it can, can, it can support itself. And then it's thicker n near, the, near the face. Like that. And then same with the sword. The sword, you can see how thick, let's see if I can get it. You can kind of see how thin that is. That's how thin the sword is. Uh, it's thick in the middle and it gets really thin on the edges. Very, very skinny. So you can print that out. Um, and it works. And same with the eyelashes. I know it's very hard to see on the camera. See, so like back here. But you, yeah, it's, they're too small to see. But these eyelashes are, um, they're also tapered. So they're thick next to her head and they taper out thin. Very thin. Yep. <laughs> All right. It's a good question. Thanks. So I love this black background behind these things. And the, this looks like there's a light on here, but there's no, there's no light. It's really, it's really weird. See, there's no light back there. Anyway, I'm working on setting this background up to be a little cooler than I used to have it. I used to have just like down here, like just a ton of characters, like just crammed in here. And it just looked like a mess. So I'm trying to kind of pull them out and stick them in groups and make them look better. So. Anyway, um, if I could, I might send you the feedback from Shapeways. Some seems like, well, it should be fine. Uh, so the biggest thing with Shapeways is... It needs to be watertight. There can't be anything inside of the model. 
and um, they they might require some things to be at least three millimeters thick or something like that, depending on their printers. So, uh, yeah, it, it just all depends. Uh, yeah, you can just send it to my email. Uh, send it to shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I'll take a look if I can. Um, I'm, I'm crazy super busy these days, but I, I, might, I might have time to take a look. Yeah, three millimeters. So it has to be three. So you can use my ruler to measure that out. Um, so if you, have, if you have my ruler file, you just measure it. So, well, these are in tens. These aren't really three millimeters. So this, these ticks, these are five millimeters. So like this tick right here in the middle of these two numbers, that's five millimeters. And you can kind of judge and see how thick that is. So just, you can use this ruler still and figure that out. But anyway, all right. Good questions though. Is it okay when they don't change positions while you're not in the room? <laughs> yeah, they move around. Oh, thanks, Raken. Over on Facebook, thank you so much. I don't know how to say your name, but thank you. Break my face cam. Oh, phew. gotta get used to that. Here, thank you. I'm just, I was just spinning my model around anyway. Okay. <laughs> you guys have to keep me on track. I'll get lost. All right, I need to go, let's see. Ah, I can stand another 30 minutes. It's really hot in here. One second, guys. I'm dying, I'm dying. Let's do the next hair. All right, that's, that's another way you can uh, make sure that you're on the proper subtool is I'll just quickly check to hit Control F to see which poly group is active. See, if I click on this blue strand of hair, I don't know that it's active or not. And if I click here, I don't know that it's active or not. So if I hit Shift F, now I'm like, okay, I'm on the right subtool. So there we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the next hair. And I love how there's all these varieties, all these shapes. Just these, uh, so then I, I can easily get variety back here. And I don't know why it's not sticking to the surface as well as it should. It's like not even close, come on. Stick to the surface. Does anyone know why it wouldn't be doing that? Is there a setting that I can change? See, look, the curve is curving and sticking, but it's not. <laughs> so this, this hairbrush is a Funky Bunny's hairbrush. It's made, the original was made by Benjamin Hale, and then it was tweaked by Chris Whitaker over at Funky Bunny's. And I think Moon Mix will pop up a no, it's not the depth slider. If you, if you guys know what that setting is, let me know so I can get it to stick better. See that? It's just not sticking to the surface. Maybe it's under stroke. Uh, there's so many things to learn with ZBrush. I can't keep them all in my brain. <laughs> so curve, edit radius, focal shift, snap distance. Anyway. Something. If you, guys, if you guys know, let me know and I'll try it. So we're just going to deal with it. Deal with it. Snap distance, maybe. Let's crank it up and see what it does. Nope. Same. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'll ask. Uh, yeah, maybe. Let's go smaller. Ah, nope. <laughs> it's still very small and it's still stuck in the head. See that? I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Paul, Gabriel, or Kyle, or some of those guys. 
Thanks, guys. We'll figure it out. I'll, let, I'll find out, and I'll let you guys know on the next stream. How's that? Okay, I, I think I've drawn this five times. Well, it does. Effects animator, like I went really small, even if I go really small with the brush, see, it still puts it right inside the head. Doesn't matter. If I go really big, ah, there you go. That made it stick to the surface. <laughs> That's backwards, right? Like, why did that stick on the surface? <laughs> Oh, and then you can actually make your brush smaller and then click on it. But no, look at that. It went right back inside. Ugh, oh, well, no worries. I don't, I don't care that much. I'm going to draw it for the 15th time and keep it. The brush size doesn't necessarily con control the curve resolution. I thought it had, I thought it did. Let's see. Um, split to unmasked points. Okay. Because it makes smaller tick, tick marks. You know? Look at that mess. Snap button. Let's see what this does. The snap mode enables the curve. Okay, I'll try it. I'll turn it on and I'll try it for the next one. But let's, uh, let's get this one positioned. That looks like a mess from that side. Look at it. It's okay from over here and then mess. Curve tube might have it once. Hmm. I don't know. I'll try. I'll try it on the next one. Let me. Uh, let me get this in place. I'm gonna really widen this one out. See, that's uh, what Move Elastic is good for. It can just let you stretch that apart. And I'll probably redo this hat so it goes up and over. Curve elastic with curve step zero. Yeah, I gotta write that down. Try it. But as you can see, it doesn't matter too much because you just start editing it, <laughs> moving it, and making it do what you want it to do. But I appreciate all the help, guys. Speaking of help, I'm trying to remember, remember the guy's name, but last, last, uh, last Monday, I was kind of struggling with the uh, Z-Remesher matching the, well, I've always struggled with, the Z-Remesher matching the Z-Remesh guides. And his tip for me was to crank up the Z-Remesh resolution and crank up the Z-Remesh curve strength to 100. So if you look at this Z-Remesher and the adaptive size to 100 and curve strength to 100, and then it, it'll work, it'll actually work. And it did work and it was, so I'm, I'm super duper grateful for that. I need to find out the dude's name so I can give him credit. Uh, I lost his email. Anyway, yeah, one of the one of the streamers. If you're here watching, say it was me. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Uh, Lawrence, yes, Lawrence, thank you. 
Yeah, Lawrence, uh, he, he, he sent me, is that you? <laughs> so it worked fantastically. So if you're watching, Lawrence, thank you so much. Yes, <laughs> yonder observer. <laughs> anyway, let me show you. Uh, so I use the guides and it worked. Look at that. So I actually drew some guides around the face and it stuck to them very nicely, actually. So yeah, let me, let me change the color. There we go, see that? And all I did was I took this head right here. This is the old head. And uh, yeah, thanks, Lawrence. I appreciate it. I'm like trying to find your name. Uh, so let's see, duplicate. And then this is just soloed. So, and it won't work if you have multiple subdivision levels. Then you just, you keep it at the same level. So I just hit delete lower to uh, lower the topology. Yeah, it's the, the topology is not bad for sculpting on, but if you want to actu actually have edge loops, it works better. Uh, it works better if you have a higher density mesh, then use these Z remesher guides. And all I did was I just kind of drew uh, the eye mask around like this. And then I drew one around the inside of the eye, like this. And wherever you have a closed shape like this, it will try to make its own polygroup around it like that. And then I did another one like this. And then I did the one that goes from the top of the nose around behind the nostril, just to the side of the corner of the mouth and then down around the mouth like this. And then I just went along the lips like this. And wherever you go across the middle stream, it does not uh, do the poly, it doesn't make a new poly group. So you have to do it by hand, but it will stick to the curve and it will make a curve. And for this one, I kind of did something like this, but that one's not the best. Anyway, I just did some Z remesher loops like that. And I, I did one around the ear, all the way around the ear. Yeah, don't cross the streams. <laughs> then, um, then I crank these two things, adaptive size and uh, curve strength. And then I hit same, so it'll keep it the same. So if, if you want to make Z remesher have less math to do it's better this might slow down the stream by the way sorry if it does um, it's better to keep same or go double or go half depending on where you are but more the more resolution it gives the z remesher more polygons to play with to match those guides better um, so there you go this is a, a super light version anyway you can see that it didn't well it did make the Poly group around the mouth, but it didn't around the lips, even though it followed the curves. So you can kind of go in there and, like, if I hid the head like this, and then just kind of hid one of these loops, then I did uh, auto groups to put that mask in its own poly group. Then what I can do is just it leaves this white line that I hid. So then I can just kind of hide that, hit Control W, put it in its own group, and then it's in its own group like this. Now what I can do is I can just hit Z remesh by half, and you know we don't have curves anymore, so curve strength doesn't matter. We can turn on Keep Groups, and then hit it again, and then it'll it'll reduce the polygon count as you go down. Uh, no, the guides can be open. How did I hide that loop? I just used the select lasso and then hold down control plus shift and tap on an edge and it will hide a poly loop. Yeah, so, so check it out. So this is half, this is reduced. And then you can just hit it again and it'll go down again. Pretty sweet. So I've been playing with that recently. Yeah, that helps a lot. And it, it, like I was showing you guys how to do peaks and valleys to keep your uh, Z remesh loops going a certain direction, but that's really hard to control, honestly, and it messes up the surface of your model. 
So doing it this way is uh, it'll reduce it. And then when you get to a certain certain uh, poly count, it doing half won't work anymore because I have adaptive size cranked. So I need to to put that down a little bit so it'll try and do half. Oh, you did. All right, Joey, let's have it. All right, Dark Place, thanks for stopping by, man. Holy cow, 4.41 in the morning. We get some sleep. But anyway, that's cool, right? Yeah, so thank you, Lawrence. Everybody say thanks to Lawrence. He's awesome. All right. So there we go. I'm going to delete that, and we'll get back to hair. All right, Joey. Do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're back to here. Let me unhide my face again. Picker? 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 <laughs> Everybody's like, thanks, Lawrence. You're the best. <laughs> he is the best. That's awesome. Okay, so picker depth continuous Z? What's picker? Oh, this? I've never opened that menu ever. Continuous Z. So that's turned on. <laughs> Captain Picker? <laughs> oh, that's Picard. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. So, is, is that the button that needed to be turned on? So, do you select it Z depth? Is this, do I crank this around? Picker and Ricker. <laughs> oh. Captain Picker. All right. We're going we're gonna to crank it up a little bit. Picard is the captain. And then Riker. Hiker. <laughs> Picker. Okay, so this, my continuous Z was already turned on. We set the brush. Okay. We're going to try it. Where in the world is brush reset? Sorry, I'm being dumb today. How do you reset the brush? Round two. All right. While you tell me, I'm going to try doing the next one. We're going to go wide cover again. Okay, that is sticking to the surface. Not sticking. I don't know. Yeah, it was the continuous Z was already turned on, so I don't know. Open the larger brush palette, this one. Oh, reset all brushes. Okay, doing it. Hopefully I didn't crash ZBrush. Okay. Oh, it reset the stroke, so let me go change the stroke back. Okay. All right. Oh, man, I think it's a grab bag. So that's on the surface, but if I drew it again, I don't know. Maybe I'm going too fast. Nope. <laughs> Check picker now. Okay, picker, continuous Z. Aha. All right, Seagull Rush, thanks. <laughs> Roy, you sound like my kids' jokes. Yay! Yay! All right. So far, so good. It's bigger. Okay. We can live with that. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Down. Put it in its own group. Move elastic. Yay! For, <laughs> I'm helping! 
I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. See, that just goes to show ZBrush is so massive. There's, I don't, I don't know of one person besides maybe, maybe Paul Gabriel or Joseph Drust or somebody. They, they're, you know, or or the guy who wrote the thing. But I don't know one person that knows it all. There's so much. So much stuff. Yeah, wait, there's way too many ways to do things, too, you know? Okay. I do. <laughs> I know all the things. <laughs> Ask me, I'm a ZBrush encyclopedia. All right. I'm breaking this. So I'm going to go change my smooth back down and just lightly smooth this stuff back. I broke it. <laughs> That's true. That's true, effects animator. No, do it this way. Yeah, Paul's all about the right-click navigation. That's his that's his soapbox. And I love right-click navigation. So I'm I'm in Paul's court on that one. You guys know don't know what right-click navigation means. It means I set this button, this first button near the closest to my tip, I set that to right click, and I use my thumb for the navigation because that way I can hold down Alt and do and push that and navigate. But uh, some people that they navigate with a mouse or something like that, they like the traditional other way of navigating. And I don't even know what that way is. I just use this way. Oh, hey, over on Facebook. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you could join me. Thank you so much. Looks like we're at 200 people watching live. Thanks, guys. Anyone have a good video about Z Modeler and Hard Surface? Yep, Pavlovich, I was just going to say, and Drust. Any other resources? Um, Paul Gabriel does some once in a while here on the, on the Twitch stream live, and he does Did You Know or Know What? I can't remember the name of it, but you can go to ZBrush Live, so pixelogic.com slash ZBrush Live and find his past streams, and he talks about it a lot. Also, uh, Brendan... Another streamer on here, he uses it a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. Thanks, Neil. Cloud Soda, excuse me, says, did you model the girl's ears from the base shape or did you make them separate and then connect them to the head? I made them, I usually make everything separate and connect them. Yeah. Okay. Once we have something like this, uh, well, let's see. I wanna, I wanna move these down more and get them interacting, overlapping, and I need more hair in here. I might delete these two and use a Funky Bunny's brush. We'll see, we'll see. I'm kind of talking to myself. <laughs> and yes, my course is open for enrollment right now, but if you go to my main page, it, it looks like it's closed, but it is open for people that are on my newsletter and people that are watching my live stream. So 
Uh, Moon Mix has been posting links to the enrollment page. It's open until this Friday, August 17th at midnight Pacific time. So if you're interested in joining us, it'd be awesome to have you in there. There are quite a few new students I'm super happy to see. Now this hair, uh, what I do is I push it, the big, the big block out glob that I made, I call it bubble gum because now it's like, it's like chewing up bubble gum and shoving it in a, in, in a hole for filler. Because if I ever want to 3D print this, I, I need it to be watertight. So back up behind all this hair, I put in my, I push my block out blob in. Sometimes I can change the color of it. I can see where it's at. And then I can push it in. It's not interfering with anything. That even looks more like bubble gum. But we would, we would use this like bubble gum fillers all the time doing the Disney Infinity stuff. To print with. See like, like this hair right here, this little opening. You, you, don't, you don't want to have any air pockets back here for air to get into. I actually learned that from the guys over at Gentle Giant. Gentle Giant Studios in Hollywood. They do a lot of uh, collectible figurines. Okay. Bubblegum. And we can change it back. And then you can still see where I need to put more hair to, to uh, dress it up, I guess. Uh, Frosty Dog, <laughs> yeah, that, that is a gigantic question. There's about a bajillion different, different differences. But basically, an, a really high level, females' heads are more round and male heads are more square. That's kind of, that's a, an over, very, very high idea that you can keep in your head, like square nose, square jaw, square eye shape, square eyebrows, square forehead, square, 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 lots of planes. And then females, very, very round, very soft, very, very soft uh, transitions, more rounder eyes, rounder cheeks, that kind of stuff. So, hey, Dante, thanks, man. Okay. Do some more in here. Get some more hair. So is this going to be printed? I'd like to print it. I would like to. I'm going to, uh, before I do the hair down in here, I'm going to do the, the cross up on her, her hats. What are you calling me? Sorry. Okay, let's do, oh, I wanna show that, okay. Um, now to do this cross is really, really easy. And I've done it a million times on my stream, but I'll do it again. So with the uh, topology brush, with this hat thing selected, all you gotta do is go in here and let's see. I'm going to apply this just to give it some subdivision level. Do I want to? No. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Uh, not matchmaker. Nope. Just, just drawing on the surface. See, what's crazy is the, uh, this topology brush works. It sticks to the surface like crazy. It does a great job. But the hairbrush has a problem. Why does it have a problem? Stop having problems, hairbrush. So see that? Easy peasy. Oops, I'm going to cut this shorter. 
Now all I have to do is pick my thickness with my brush size and tap on the surface. Um, and it has issues. So first of all, I'm gonna split it. Split unmasked points. That'll put it in its new subtool, and then you hit the down arrow to select that new subtool. And I have dynamic subdivisions turned on, so I'm gonna turn that off. And I have a hole in the center because it was mirrored. So I'll show you how to fix that really quick. Turn on my poly groups. All you have to do is drag the stuff from the left to the right. So I'm gonna turn off symmetry. <laughs> What's that? going on Steven crease it you know you want to so I'm just going to drag this over to that side and then hit uh, mirror and weld and that fixes it easy fix there we go and then I actually I'm going to uncrease it Uncrease it, Steven. Then if you hit uh, group by normals, then it puts a normal on every side that is uh, 90 degrees. Boop, boop, boop. Or I think maybe even 45 or higher. See all these different colors. Now what I can do is hit uh, crease by poly group. And it puts a crease on all the edges that I want it to be. Uncrease. <laughs> Now if I hit D for dynamic subdivisions, boom, it's creased, it's beautiful. Now we just need to paint it red. Boom, that's a bright red. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> it's all right. Longest links ever. No, it's fine. All right, so boom, cross. There we go. And I, you could, uh, you can make it softer. You don't have to be that that heavy of a crease or anything like that. But all right, yeah, maybe I'll have, uh, maybe I'll have Smartest print this for me, huh? Right, Stephen? Want to print this? <laughs> if I can ever get it done. Here we go. Back to on hairbrush wide cover one. Oh, moon mix i'm gonna miss you man you're my live bot oh we got red right split unmasked points down Robust full. What is that? Sorry, I'm dumb. Tuck this behind her ear. Hey, Tennis, you're. You're a minute from me being done with the stream, man. Sorry. <laughs> Just in time. But luckily these are, re these are recorded, so you can watch them back. Oh, really? So that's, that's the name of your printer? And you can't rename it? That sucks. I'd raise a complaint. Uh, Kareem, no, this is, this is Funky Bunny's hairbrush. It's, a, it's my favorite. You can find it on funkybunnies.com. Okay, now I'm going to do this side here. Because I don't, I don't like these two strands that are happening. I'm going to redo this and redo this. 
You should complain. <laughs> Why can't I rename my printer? What's wrong with you people? It looks like this Makan Hair Curve. M A K K O N. Hair Curves 3 is what it's called. I love it. Um, I'm going to do wide cover one again. Two. Maybe that one. What unmasked points? I'm just kind of going fast now because it's almost my stream's almost done. I wanted to get get this closer. And I'm going to go in probably with uh, Sculptress Pro and put all these little hair squiggles in there. And to end these hair strands. Broke that one. Didn't <laughs> there you go. Name it some Star Trek spaceship or something. The USS something. You can also inflate these hair strands. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. And Chris Whitaker is also a, a, a really good artist. So is Benjamin Hale. They're, they're both really good. You should give them a like and a follow. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so DE Hair Tubes, that's the Dylan Ekron brush. Um, this one, it just makes me, it, it just gives me the ability to go a little faster. It's not necessarily better, just different. Um, the strands aren't, or the strands on this brush are all connected, and the strands on the Dylan Ekron brush are not. So... Like, I have that Dylan Ekron brush here somewhere, right here, DE hair tubes. So, like this multi-thick A. Um, so this one, I'll just show you. It gives you a lot of, uh, the stroke is messed up. It just gives you a lot of strands all together. And then you, it's kind of like spaghetti. And then you undo the strands and, and then manipulate each, each strand. When I'm taking my time to do hair, I know this has taken like two streams to do this hair, but when I'm really taking my time to do hair, I actually, w I, I prefer the Dylan hairbrush because it's more precise and detailed and I can really get in there and make it look better. But when I'm going quicker and I want just a, a better look quicker, I like this, I like this brush. And I like the way the, the tips end in like these peaks kind of nice and how they kind of overlap and yeah just it's just a little faster that's all i'm just kind of lazy sometimes and these are faster <laughs> that's the only reason the only difference Let's see All right. Yeah, see, I need to come in here and like, I really want to do all these little twisties and stuff. And these little extra, th these little fine extra hairs in there. Um, I won't punish you and make you sit and watch me build those, but. Anyway, I'm pretty okay with how this is turning out. Need to fix the overlaps as well, so there's not any inner interpenetrating hairs going on in there. Yep, 
Mix Moon Mix. And then I also like to combine uh, the different hairs into one subtool. And that way I can really uh, detail out the, the large shapes. So I'll merge them all together. And I need to finish making the hairs along her face match the hairs along the, the longer lengths by putting, um, by putting some creases and stuff in there. Making them lighter. So I'll, I'll take the pinch brush and I'll go in here and just kind of put some creases in here by hand to make them match and look the same. That. That's what I'll do after. Yeah, I'll post it on ArtStation. I will. I, I haven't been. I don't know why I haven't been posting my, my stream models in ArtStation, but I did post the Zenyatta today. So that was cool. That was fun to do. You guys watched it. Anyway, um, yep, I think that is it today. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me on another Monday. I'll be here same exact time next week. That's noon my time, 11 a.m. Pacific. So uh, I stream right after Eamon. If you guys, you guys should watch Eamon's stuff. He's really cool. Uh, he teaches about 3D printing and his little, his little dino mushroom squad. Really cool. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, lots going on. I got uh, the course is open until Friday. So if you guys are interested, Moonmix has been sending you links to that. Um, it's just 3dcharacterworkshop.com forward slash P forward slash enrollment. So if you're interested in that. And uh, yep, thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll tell you more about it if you want to know. And if you're interested in these brushes, as always, you can get them on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Just go to the front page and grab them right there. And uh, there, I also give away this user interface and the ruler, the ruler file that'll help you with scale, stuff like that. So anyway, thanks guys. Take care. I hope your week is awesome. And, uh, and I hope to see you in the course if you're interested. And we will see you. And I, I keep, I always forget. No, I don't always forget. I, I should say thank you very much, Pixelogic, for having me on this stream. It's, it means a lot. It really means a lot to allow you allow me to stream on Twitch and your Facebook and your YouTube channels. And I will be at the ZBrush Summit this year. I won't be doing any talks or workshops there this year, but I am sponsoring it. So I will be giving away three copies of my course during the summit. And you can only win them online, not in person. So if you are online and you're watching it, you can, in between the little talks and things, they do giveaways, and one of the giveaways will be my course. So you can, you can check that out. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, guys. And uh, as it's been fun, as always. So we will see you next Monday. Cheers. Take care. Have a good night.